Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of What's Next with Veronica. If you're just tuning in for the first time, this is a new IG Live series where I go on live with former student athletes that understand firsthand what it's like to step into the world of sports and entertainment. We go on every Tuesday and Thursday on Tuesdays at 1, 4 o'clock Pacific time, or 4 o'clock Eastern time, Thursdays at 12. Um, today's guest, we have Jared Barnes, who is a former Ohio State alum, and now he works with the LA Rams, and so we're going to talk to him about his journey and how he got to where he was. And throughout the live, I'm going to pin it right now. You can ask questions in the question box. Let me make sure it's pinned. Ask him any questions, and then when we finish off, the will for you guys to get those answered. So we're going to wait for him to enter in, and we're going to get going. But, and while you're here, if you haven't already, turn on your push notifications so you can keep getting updates on what we're going to do and when we're going to do it next. But right now we're just waiting for Jared. Like I said, if you missed it, he's an Ohio State alum who is now with the LA Rams. Hello, hello. Hello, how are you? I am well, I am well. How are you? You staying safe and healthy? As healthy as I can. (laughs) Just quarantined, really quarantined. I hear you. You and me both. You and me both. Ready to get outside, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, as I mentioned before, you're with the Los Angeles Rams working in former player development, but what exactly does that job entail? Yeah, so, you know, it's it's a very unique role, very diverse. Mm-hmm. So what I do, I help all of our former players stay connected to the organization. So I work with everyone uh, from our practice squad guys who ended up not making our active roster all the way up to our Hall of Famers. So it's this really unique world of athlete development, but also really athlete marketing. Um, heavily involved with our marketing and sponsorship teams uh, and work with our Hall of Famers and, and kind of premier guys to get them involved in our sponsorship deals and different appearances we do out uh, from a brand activation standpoint. So it's, uh, it's unique. And being a former player, it's, it's always cool just to be around you know, our guys and, and add value where I can. Yeah, is that something that was started once you came in? Is that a program you started yourself or was it there before? Yeah, so it's really a brand new uh, platform that the organization has been a trailblazer in. Um, it, it's actually not uniform across the league. So the Rams are, are probably one of the only franchises to really be out there uh, in this field. And it's, it's exciting. And it's, yeah. it, it's sometimes they're wrecking because there's not much of a blueprint, but I think that's also what makes it a great opportunity. Yeah, you can kind of create on the go. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. But rewinding, yeah. since you were in high school, I was they, probably your whole life, but we only have stats from high school. You always seem to be academically driven. You were a two-time honor roll honoree in high school. When you were at the, when you were at Louisville, you finished your bachelor's degree in three <laughs> years, transferred to the Ohio State University. <laughs> I got you, and got your master's in science in sports management in one year with a 3.67 GPA. And then <laughs> you were one of, you were the only football player to enter in the PhD program while you were there. That, that's insane, first of all, but that requires a type of drive and a work ethic. Like where did that come from? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The first thing I'll say is I just showed up. You know, a lot of the times, um, I, I'm, I'm like so human and, and everyone else is like, Jared, how did you do that? And I'm like, man, you know, honestly, I showed up and I think that was probably the first step of me just stepping up to the plate and like, hey, like I'm ready to take this at bat. I'm ready mm-hmm. to buckle my chin strap and just get out there today. Um, I, I wouldn't, I don't consider myself like overly smart or like this unbelievable, like, oh my <laughs> gosh, but like seriously, just showing up was half the battle. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and allowing, uh, I think, for myself, me to even dream and, and think about that as an opportunity. Like when I, coming out of high school, I never in a million years anticipated even pursuing a graduate degree. Yeah. Never even thought about, you know, being a guy who was in a PhD program. You know, never even thought about <laughs> it, but I kept showing up. And because I kept showing up and not just showing up, but then actively pursuing things mm-hmm. and actively get to know my professors, actively asking questions, being engaged, participating, it mm-hmm. just seemed more and more opportunities started to, to present themselves. So um, I have to attribute it a lot to honestly just showing up. Mm-hmm. And that's really what started this chain reaction of, of some really cool opportunities that, that you talked about. Yeah, so I know as a student athlete, still there, um, 
we always feel like our schedule is so busy. So what yeah. advice would you give to those student athletes who think like this is impossible? What you did is impossible. What advice do you have for them? Man, you know, I would say well, number one is listen to that inner voice. You know, one of the things that, that I, I cherish from my childhood, my mother really worked hard to instill in me is to listen to that inner voice of, you know, whether it's a question you ask yourself or something you wonder about or that kind of inner creativity mm -hmm. um, that, that, you know, is just coming like pops in your head. And for me, I would always ask the question of like, man, like, what if I, what if I actually like pursued this internship program? What yeah. if I actually like started something? <laughs> What if I, you know, reached out to my professor and said, hey, do you think I could do a PhD? You know, mm -hmm. like, I, I, and then that, again, allowed me to, to shift my perspective and think in a more broad level than just doing what my coach told me to do. Yeah. And I know my coaches love me, and I still have great relationship, great relationship with my coaches to this day, but they, were, they weren't also the ones who were pushing me in that realm of my life, right? Mm -hmm. I think we all have to find individuals, whether that's a mentor, whether that's, you know, somebody from uh, an accountability standpoint in your finances, like who's pushing you in each respective area of your life. And for me, it was, you know, a, a couple of my professors that I can really point back to. And I'm like, man, they really challenged me to to be the best I could be. Yeah. And a lot of I know a lot of student athletes like don't take advantage of the office hours mm -hmm. that professors have. But professors are really willing to put in the time and work to make you as great as you want to be. So it's all about getting to them and actually seeking help. So was that's some advice that I didn't learn until, <laughs> until yeah. this past year, which a lot of people should start earlier. But, you know, playing football at Ohio State, you're surrounded by some elite talent. Like, you were there in 2015, Ezekiel Elliott, Crazy. Joey Bosa, even Joe Crazy. Burrow. Like, <laughs> yeah. looking back on it, how does that provide some context into your current role? Mm, that's a great question. You know, for me, so the reason, again, just to, to give you context, the reason I transferred to Ohio State uh, is because I wanted to be surrounded by the best. I started my career at Louisville as a walk-on. So, like, literally went from, like, trying out from the program all the way to starting, ended up starting about 22 games at Louisville. Um, and I transferred to Ohio State and became, like, the third-string safety after being a starter at Louisville. And so it was yeah. incredibly humbling, but for me it was a great life lesson that I never wanted to be the best one in the room, right, because you are going to be the average of the people who you're surrounded with. So I truly wanted to surround myself with greatness. And it pushed me to, again, think at a higher level, uh, pushed me to perform beyond what I even thought possible. And so fast forward to my role with the Rams, right? You know, I'm, the, I'm this kid <laughs> from Columbus, Ohio, working with this enormous global brand in the LA yeah. Rams. And you're getting, you know, VPs of finance. You're getting a chief operating officer. Uh, our chief marketing officer was previously at Visa. You know, so like being around some heavy hitters mm -hmm. and I'm like, wow, like, I'm a freshman all over again, right? Like, I, I went through my red shirt year, and now I'm yeah. really, you know, learning, learning the game, learning the language, how to present myself in, in this space. And, you know, I had to give myself that grace, give myself a, a buffer to, to acclimate to that. But very similar to my time at Ohio State and, and finding these ways to, at that time, contribute to the program, now I'm looking to just contribute through my role to the franchise. So it's yeah. been um, a very unique journey that I think – I'm so grateful for my previous experiences because I think it's allowed me to really maximize this current one. Yeah, and I was reading this article on you that <laughs> said, yeah, it was like talking about how great you were academically and how you just kept pushing yourself. And in it, you had an, advis an advisor that mentioned you were, when you came to Ohio State, you were the first student athlete that he had spoken to that had a business plan and knew exactly what you wanted to do. So how, who helped you develop that plan so, i mean it's a great question so i mean oddly enough i went to a conference in 2013 it was called athletes and social change um yeah. at the time it was it was in louisville kentucky and just got exposed to a lot of people in the space who were thinking about how athletes can leverage their platform mm -hmm. um and so i don't know if it was one specific person i could point to but it was a series i, I did informational interviews probably like three to four times a week. Like I was just so hungry to learn people's stories and yeah. where they came from, how like their journeys. And it like was this incredible funnel into this idea of a business plan. Um, and it was very young at the time, but I think if there's any encouragement I can share with people watching is again, tap into that creativity and listen to that inner voice because you never know what it could become, right? Yeah. That same business plan that I developed in, in 2013 at that time ended up becoming a full-fledged organization in 2019. 
that would be a go and grow beyond what I ever even imagined. You know, so and that it started from this one conference that I bought like a ten dollar ticket to, and you know, you just never know what can happen. So mm -hmm. um, that's really how it all started, and it was because reaching out to all these people and just gaining that perspective. You know, that I I may not have gotten otherwise. Yeah, and you did almost everything you could do as a student athlete. You took advantage of your resources. You studied abroad, and then after leaving, you're the assistant director at athlete development at Clemson mm -hmm. and then now with the LA Rams you started Prime U and I want to talk a little bit more about <laughs> that and in the Prime U if you go to his website you have the Slack community yeah and I guess I just want to know um what is the Slack community and I guess especially in a time where we have the coronavirus and mm -hmm. everyone is working online I think that this platform is really great for people who need to be connected and need a way to get connected with others. So what is it? Tell me a little bit more about it. I kind of gave a little refresher, but <laughs> you could take off from there. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I think during these past couple months, you know, I felt like pretty isolated. Right. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, I'm like naturally an introvert, but I do love connecting with people and having like very deep, authentic connections uh, and just being around other people who are, you know, for lack of a better term, like about that life, you yeah. know? And so um, I'm like, man, I see this platform in Slack. How is, is there a way we could help connect and engage people um, to just have that authentic conver conversation and, and build together, right? I think Prime U was just a byproduct of some great conversations and people building together. Um, and it was just this really unique kind of ecosystem. And I think the Slack group was, again, just a byproduct of that, that it evolved into an opportunity for those, you know, whether you're particularly, quote unquote, in the athlete development space or not, if you're, you know, looking to just connect and engage with people in that realm, um, it's a great platform and opportunity to do so. I mean, we have it. And it was, what's crazy is I sent it to about five or six of my friends. Yeah. Uh, and within 48 hours, there was like, 125 people in there so it was like whoa like crazy right and so yeah. it's like okay like let's actually grow this thing let's build this thing um and allow people who are looking for information looking to network looking to just learn right and looking to grow themselves i mean i think that's really what prime U stands for but you know honestly what, what i stand for as well is like man how can i be around other people who are going to sharpen and refine me and it's uh it's just a great opportunity to grow so yeah, that's, I mean, that's really what the Slack community is all about. <laughs> and you guys can find that. It's just PrimeU. Yeah, PrimeU.org slash The Lab. So the, yeah, the, lab. the group is called The Athlete Development Lab. Yep. And you guys can all tap in with who. But I might tap in too. I got you. <laughs> but so from your journey, you've had a long journey and there's still way more to go. Like just starting this new program with the LA Rams. What would you say are three takeaways student athletes who want to have this business plan like you did who want to take off into the world and like kickstart running what are three takeaways that you can give them so they can start that journey now mm. and i think honestly you uh you hit it right on the head in, in starting the journey now uh i think the biggest thing is is get exposure early right when i was at ohio state i was the president of the social entrepreneurship club um i was actively involved with the columbus startup community um, and I was like just testing ideas and, and started Prime U at a local high school with basically zero dollars in budget. And I had about six or seven, you know, high school kids who, who wanted to join and, 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 and improve through the program. So I think just starting and not being afraid to start whatever it is, whether it's doing an IG live show like this, whether, yeah. you know, hey, you have an idea about starting a clothing line, like go ahead and develop a T-shirt and, and put it out there and see what happens. I think the beautiful, most beautiful thing about entrepreneurship particularly is the feedback loop you get, right? No different than your sport. Um, your coach is constantly analyzing film, analyzing uh, your technique, and you're getting active feedback. Once you transition into corporate, in corporate America and, and really the professional world, that feedback loop slows down a little bit. So yeah. finding ways, number one, just starting, right? Allowing that idea to actually turn into action. And then number two, really, once you get that action, once you take that action, finding ways to get some feedback on that, right? And, and I think being humble about it, you know, I'm, you know yeah. to be honest, there's a lot of people initially told me like, Jared, that's not a good idea. Like, and, and, and don't take it as like, oh, they're out to get me. It's like, okay, well, 
how could it be better? You know, mm -hmm. so being open to that feedback. And then I think number three uh, is, is finding other people uh, who are in that same, same mindset, the same wavelength. Uh, one of my favorite things um, I would always do as a student, student athlete is I would kind of just interview other people, right? Whether they're mm -hmm. international students, I would just get to learn my classmates and like, oh, like, where are you from? And, you know, how did, how did your journey shape you? You know, no different the questions you're asking me. I think yeah. there's so much value in asking these exact same questions to your peers, right? And just being yeah. real and I think building kind of that community along with you, because um, that's how movements start. Right. Movements start really with asking the question. Uh, and for me, I just found myself asking all these questions in this crazy kind of ecosystem at, you know, Ohio State and, and, and really trying to tap into the, uh, the resources, you know, that, that were available. Yeah. And speaking of questions, you guys can keep <laughs> asking questions if you have one. We're going to get started on one that came for you. Here it is. What is your advice for mm -hmm. someone interested in player? personnel football slash football operations? It's a great question. So anyone interested in player personnel, football operations, whatever that may be at the NFL level, um, there's really three key events that you want to go to. Number one is the NFL combine. Uh, mm -hmm. That is anyone who's everyone in, in football operations is at the combine in Indianapolis every year. That is a must, uh, a absolute must if you're looking to break into the industry. Um, and, and there's not necessarily any formal events around it, but just by being in the space, right? The, the NFL is a very tight knit community and it's built on relationships. It's built on who you know. And so by you making yourself available, you never know who you'll run into. Um, and just having your resume available and by you making yourself available already puts you that much further ahead of other candidates who maybe send in a cold email from a thousand miles away. Um, so the NFL combine is huge. The others are, are senior bowls and all-star games. Uh, those are other great opportunities um, to break into the space, particularly as well, whether it be scouting or other departments. And then in the college space, right in the college space, I think it's really, really um, uh, a, a great way to get in is that whether it's a student intern. Um, there's a lot of different angles you could get in, but just volunteering, uh, finding ways to make yourself available. That is the absolute biggest thing because football any any football operations or any sport operations right it's like bang 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 you never yeah. know what's gonna happen <laughs> um you know there's a lot of moving parts and so just by being present in that you're already putting yourself that much further ahead so i hope that was helpful and can can answer that question <laughs> that was very helpful <laughs> and finishing up i from this whole conversation what is the biggest thing you want viewers and people who are tuning in later to take away from this? Mm, I think um, the older I've gotten and the longer I've been in the industry is understanding the patience that's required to truly be great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in this day and age of Instagram and everybody's blowing up overnight and you see like people's followers scale like this. Yeah. <laughs> like, people, when you understand how long it takes to truly be great, you know, it's very humbling. Like, oh, this is awesome, you know, you're doing this, but can you do this for a year, for two years, for five years, for 10 years? Um, and I've really been able to just get that perspective, right, by being around some other, uh, whether it be top leaders in the, in the industry or even connected with our former players, right? I mean, one of our, our former players, Jackie Slater, he's a Hall of Famer. He played in the NFL for 20 years. I'm like, yo, that's way, that's like over half my life. Like, you, <laughs> you played in the NFL over half that's my life. That's ridiculous. Life ridiculous 20 years in the like, nfl to operate at that level for 20 years um and i, I try to internalize that right to, to help manage my own expectations yeah. where it's an everyday thing it's an everyday it's, it's so much about consistency and it's a journey too right and and i think there is a lot of there's a lot of grit in the grind but there's a lot of joy in the grind as well mm -hmm. um and so just embracing that having patience and knowing that with every step you're taking you're just putting money in the bank money yeah. in the bank and one day you're gonna be able to cash it out i wouldn't be here at the la rams if it wasn't for prime U. prime U is actually the opportunity that opened up the gateway for the rams and mm -hmm. it wasn't anything i necessarily knew or you know necessarily applied for it just presented itself but it was because i kept putting money in the bank money in the bank um and, and being consistent so yeah no I, I hope that i hope that answers your question no it did for sure um Thank you so much. I, I know I learned a lot. I'm the type of person that wants something to be great right away. I, I get frustrated when I'm in practice and I 
didn't perfect it right when my coach told me the first time. And so knowing and that advice that is a slow grind and people, it takes every day and you have to keep developing your skills every day is great advice. And it's a great key that people can take away from this, but thank you so much for your time. Um, if people want to watch, we're going to have the YouTube coming up, turn on your push notifications. If you have any questions for Jared, I'll DM us and I'll get them out <laughs> to you and we'll try to figure out a way for you to answer them. But Thank you so much for your time. Enjoy your Cinco de Mayo and staying in quarantine. <laughs> yes, thank you for having me. Stay safe okay. and stay healthy. Thanks, bye. Okay, guys, that was a great conversation that we had with Jared. Like I said, it's going to be posted on YouTube and we'll post some of it on our IGTV. It'll be on every social media platform. So since you're on here, you're already going to see it. If you saw, I did take a sip, though, out of my new Mobot water bottle. It's a foam roll. It's the first foam roll water bottle, which is really cool, especially as student athletes when our bodies are always sore. You always need a roller or to stretch something out. You have one on hand. I have the, I have the gray size. There's a bigger size called um, Big Bertha. There's a smaller size called um, Firecracker. So you can go onto Mobot, onto their website, and if you use if you use promo code hot what's next, then you can get 25% off of your purchase. So go and check that out. Tune in. We're going to be on live again in about 10 minutes with Daryl. Daryl Reynolds, who was a Villanova alum, and now he's a content creator and director for Stay Tuned Network. So I'll see you guys soon, and thanks for watching.